All right, how's everybody doing tonight? My name is Scott Conant. Uh, I'm gonna host you tonight uh, to talk about the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. I'm seeing some of the names on the list. I recognize a lot of the names. Sarah, how are you? Uh, Edward, how you doing? Tell your mom I said hi. Hi, Adam, Alex, where are we all from? If you could go ahead and type in real quick where you're from, that would be great. And then I will, uh, we'll get going here pretty soon. Excellent. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of folks from Michigan, one from Jersey. Hi, Zach. Uh, looks like we've got uh, several from the Chicagoland area coming in. Good to see you guys. All right. Well, I know that this is a challenging time, to say the least, for everybody, especially for you. Many of you are high school seniors right now, and I recognize that, um, you know, you're, you may be losing things like senior prom and... Uh, your grad bash and your senior trips and these last couple months with friends. And, and so we know how hard that is. And, and I really do appreciate you joining me tonight so we can talk about what's next. And what's next, hopefully, in this, this, these steps that you take in your academic career. Uh, we'll be here at the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences here at Western Michigan University. Uh, if you just joined us, my name is Scott Conant. I'm the manager for outreach and recruitment for our college. I've been doing this for a long time and, and I'm really happy to have you here. And so if I can get going here, this is just a little bit about me. I'm a two-time graduate of this university, uh, graduated in 1999 and then again in 2017 with a master's degree. Um, that's my contact information there. That's also my family. We love to go to concerts uh, in the summer and hopefully later this summer, those will pick up again so we can go. Uh, but let's talk briefly about our college. And then afterwards, uh, we'll have the Q&A box ready to go and you can uh, ask a lot of questions. I'll try to answer as I go. Uh, it, but if not, I'll follow up uh, at the end of the presentation with some answers, okay? All right, so first off, if you haven't been here before, I highly encourage you to come and take a tour. Once we get up and running, we give tours every day except for Sunday. Uh, and so if you haven't been here yet, I really encourage you to come and see it. Uh, so let's talk about what distinguishes us a little bit from uh, some of the other programs that are out there. And there are a lot of programs out there, so it's good that you're looking. First off, all of our programs are fully ABET accredited. And what that means is that we are accredited by the, uh, the highest authority in North America, the Accrediting Board for Engineering and Technology. And I think that's pretty important uh, to, to highlight that all of our programs are. So when you're going through this process of uh, a college search for engineering, make sure that what you're looking at is accredited. We focus on design, build, and present experiences. Now I know uh, presentations are not most people's forte, uh, especially in the world of engineering, uh, but we're gonna get you there, okay? We're gonna focus, of course, on the design and the build experience of, uh, of the world of engineering and applied sciences, but we also want you to be able to present them and speak to your ideas, because if we can't get you to speak to your ideas, chances are, they won't become realized, and we really need them to become realized. We have a lot of hands-on experiences, and I know that every single university out there will tell you that they have hands-on experiences. If you haven't been here before, uh, I can tell you that, uh, well, I can't wait to show you uh, what that means here. For those of you who have visited us, you've seen the facilities here, and you know what we mean uh, when we say what we can provide here. It's pretty, pretty outstanding. And then we have the STEP program uh, for student support, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. <clears throat> also unique is this campus. We have our own campus here at Western Michigan University just for the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. It's called the Parkview Campus. We're located in Floyd Hall. Now, we share this campus with 40 other companies right now, and they are featuring uh, areas of research and, and business development and engineering, technology, and the life sciences. And so we have a lot of engagement with our corporate partners out here at this site. This building itself is a hundred million dollar research facility. That's the picture you see there uh, on the screen. And um, that picture uh, is, uh, well, it's pretty lonely right now because I'm the only one in the building <laughs> at this moment. Uh, but we'd love to have you come on out and see us. Now, don't worry about being between both because uh, we have a bus that connects the two. Hang on just one second. 
All right, so let's talk about our programs real quick. First off, our engineering programs. We have some of your standard programs that you will find at every institution, most every institution that has engineering, right? They have mechanical engineering, uh, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, and civil engineering. And those tend to be the, the, the tent poles of an engineering program. We have those too. Uh, we also have some very unique programs. We have one of only two aerospace engineering programs in the state of Michigan. And we've been doing aerospace and aeronautics now since the late 1940s here at the institution. So uh, we pride ourselves on what we can do in those arenas. We have uh, industrial and entrepreneurial engineering, which was the first ever accredited and recognized entrepreneurial engineering program in the country. And so they do some pretty outstanding things. And then we have one of the most unique programs that you'll find anywhere, and that's called paper engineering. There are only three paper engineering majors in the country right now. And uh, we have um, one of the largest for certain, but one of the most unique programs in that the experiences we can provide for you through our pilot programs. And then we have the applied sciences programs where we have engineering design technology, engineering management technology, which engineering management is, uh, is like a hybrid between engineering and business. And then we have manufacturing engineering technology as well. These are really hands-on programs. Uh, they're really engaged with our corporate partners and they do some really fun stuff in our labs here in the building. And then on the, appliance, uh, the applied sciences side, we have computer science, uh, which is the, currently the fastest growing program we have and graphic and printing science as well. So we have a lot of options for you. Uh, I, I don't see you getting bored at all, okay? Now you saw that some of these majors have asterisks next to them, and there's a good reason, because they all offer what's called an accelerated degree option. The accelerated degrees allow you to take graduate level coursework in your senior year and pay undergraduate rates. And they will double count those, those credits for uh, your undergraduate bachelor's degree and then toward a master's degree. So you could finish up your master's degree in just one additional year in these programs. Okay, so uh, that's not something you decide yet. That's usually something that you will decide toward the end of year two with your academic advisor. Now, math is important, of course. Uh, it is the, the language of engineering. And uh, so because of that, it's important that we get you in the right math course uh, in, in the first semester. Uh, to earn an engineering degree, you get to go through Calculus 4. Uh, to earn an engineering technology degree, it's usually Calculus 2. Computer science is Calculus 1, plus a couple other classes as well. Uh, so there's some variation there, but it's, it's going to be based off of where you place to begin your math credits. So what we have here, taking your SAT or ACT in mind, is if you start off in Calc 1 through your ACT or, or SAT, your scores will have to be a 27 or above on the math ACT or a 640 and above on the math SAT, okay? If you don't have those scores for next fall, you will be encouraged and actually you'll, be, you'll have to take the Alex math placement exam. Now, uh, this assessment is done at your own pace and it's done at your own place. You do it online whenever you're ready to do it, okay? We will also take AP and IB scores. If you have credits coming in from another community college or another institution, uh, we will evaluate those credits and, and award accordingly. Uh, so there's a great website there that you can take a look at if you wanna go learn more about how to do that. But let me talk about the Alex Math Placement real quick. All right. There we go. So this placement tool, is a, it's, a, it's a website that's got a lot on it, okay? So you wanna go to uh, wmich.edu slash step slash Alex, A-L-E-K-S. And if you walk through this here, you'll see there's a ton of information. But the ones to highlight are here. Who has to take the Alex Math Placement uh, Test? There is no fee. You can retake it up to five times, okay? And we encourage you to utilize uh, the tools that Alex provides you in terms of all your preparation work uh, prior to taking the assessment, but you can always take it again, okay? To do so, you have to spend a minimum of five hours of prep work on the learning modules that they provide. 
Okay, now this is great because it allows you to see where you are and get where you want to be, all before you arrive here for orientation, all right? Uh, and then uh, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see where your cutoff scores are. So if you get a 76% or above, you can be placed off into Calc 1, which is a wonderful spot to be in for semester one. Don't worry, because if you placed into pre-calculus or even in Algebra 2, we have a pathway built for you. Okay, it may not be a four-year pathway anymore, depending on what we can do to supplement those credits over the summertime, but we have a pathway for you. But this tool is important, and I really encourage uh, you to use that. All right. So let's get back to the presentation screen. Hopefully you're all still with me. Okay. Yeah, so that's a slide that I forgot I built. That has everything for you right there too, along with the, uh, uh, the website for you to check out. Now the AB, uh, AP scores and the IB scores, I know this can be tricky, seniors, if you are looking at doing your IB uh, assessments right now, your international baccalaureate assessments. I understand there's not going to be a, an actual test this year. They'll take your IAs into account and come up with a certificate. I'm not exactly sure yet how that's going to uh, flesh out on our end, but keep going to that website. Uh, we'll keep that updated for you. Uh, for AP, if you get, get a four or a five on the AP calculus exams, uh, then you will, uh, you'll have earned at least calculus one credit, maybe, maybe more, okay? So keep up the good work on those areas. So let's talk about the STEP program because the STEP program has some incredible features for our students. These are for our current, current students. Uh, it's not something you have to sign up for. It's available for everybody here who is studying in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. It focuses on providing a network of support for all of our students. Look, an engineering curriculum is not going to be easy, okay? It's going to be rigorous and you want a rigorous program for engineering. You don't want an engineer who um, well, doesn't know how to build a bridge, for instance, or make the right kind of medication. So we uh, focus hard on the rigor, but we provide all of the services there to support you through that program. And it focuses on our free tutoring services, our step cohorts, uh, and early intervention skills. Okay, and so let's talk about those real quick. Our student success centers are actually free tutoring centers. They're open until midnight, most every night of the week. So there's never a problem of getting you the help that you need. So if you're taking a physics class, for instance, and um, you have an exam coming up and you're not prepared for it or you don't feel prepared for it, go to the student success centers, sit down with the tutor. And I guarantee that if you have questions about things that are going on in class, you're not the only one. There will be other classmates there, okay? So it, the, the, these areas, these centers serve as a really great place for you to work together in teams with your classmates and to learn from each other, okay? Um, so almost all the engineering courses and the computer science courses are covered in this as well, but any math, physics, or chemistry course that you take is covered through this too, okay? The tutors themselves are upper level uh, students of ours. So if you are very successful and you wanna help tutor, then we could hire you down the road uh, to be a tutor for us as well, okay? We also have cohorts built in. Again, this is all something that we do for you. You don't have to opt in or opt out of these, um, but we guarantee, well, we don't guarantee, we, we try to ensure that we build manageable schedules where you are sharing similar courses with other students who are where you are and studying what you're studying. What I mean by that is, if you're coming in as an electrical engineering student, and you're ready to start in Calculus 1, then we're gonna find about 20 other first year uh, electrical engineering students who are starting in Calc 1, and we're gonna put you all in that class together. And then we're gonna find four or five other courses throughout that first year and put you all together uh, throughout that experience so that you form these study groups, that you form these friendships, and you get this collegial feel uh, as you go through this process, okay? We've seen a lot of benefits from this. We've seen best friendships uh, form out of this, but more than that, we've seen a lot of support. And what we know is that if you learn something at the level that you feel comfortable teaching it to your peers, then you're gonna do just fine on the, on the exams, okay? And so that's where we wanna get 
uh, with these step cohorts, get you in a comfortable setting with other students who are where you are and want to be where you're going, and, and you'll get there together. And it's been a lot of fun to watch these things grow. Now, I mentioned that we have our own campus, that we're four miles away from the main campus. With that in mind, we encourage you all to live on campus that first year. We offer the Engineering House, which is in Valley 3 in Eldridge Fox Halls. Uh, we have two living learning communities over there where we have the General Engineering uh, House, and we also have Honors Engineering House. If, uh, for those of you who are gonna be in the Honors College and Engineering, you can select to be in that too. Uh, built in with this building is one of our student success centers and also a 24 seven uh, computer lab. That's a direct clone of the lab we have over here at Floyd Hall. And so uh, we want you to live there. Um, we think that you guys um, would, would benefit a lot from that. And the data shows that. What we know is that our students who choose to live there in their first year have a higher grade point average than our students who choose to live elsewhere in that first year. Uh, and that's regardless of major, it's regardless of your academic standing when you, when you got here, okay? And so we know that that community feel and having the support right there where you're living is, is vital to your success in that first year. So I would highly recommend that. Now, for those of you who are already seniors and you're admitted and you're going through this process right now, if you have already submitted for housing and you wanna change that, you can contact housing uh, and you want to log into your GoWMU site uh, contact housing and let them know uh, that you want to change to Eldridge Hall. Okay, I want to be clear, this is not a requirement. We don't make you live there. I would just highly recommend it because we know that it works so well. Okay. Now the return is significant. These are the starting salaries uh, for the last five years on average, uh, depending on major. And the reason we show this is not so that you try to find the longest line and say that that's what I'm going to go to. Just know that the lines are all pretty long that this is uh, one of the best paying fields you can go into. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my student ambassadors, uh, she is just wrapping up her junior year right now, uh, was just offered uh, an, an incredible uh, opportunity to join a local company here uh, near the Kalamazoo area, uh, paying in the mid 70 thousands, and she doesn't graduate for another year. And so they're gonna hold her spot for another year. So that's exciting to see uh, when these things come rolling out. We are pretty good at what we do here, and we really wanna make sure that our students are good at what they do. And to that end, we see a 94% post-secondary success rate. What that means is that our students, when they graduate, either have a job to go into in their career field, or they've chosen to go on uh, to a graduate program somewhere. So for instance, on the right side of your screen, you see Jacob there holding the plaque. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Hudson is presenting him with an outstanding student award. He is currently a graduate student at, uh, with the Purdue Aerospace Program. And so we really want our students to use us as a springboard either into a wonderful career or to advance their academics down the road. And our students go work for some pretty cool people. Okay, over the last two years, these are some of the companies that have hired our students uh, right out of their undergraduate program. And so um, our students are literally all over the world. It's been fun. Now, with that comes uh, internship and co-op experiences. Uh, almost all of our students will do either an internship, a co-op, or focus on a research experience before they graduate. Uh, last summer, on average, our summer internships paid about 20 bucks an hour. And so it pays pretty well. We do not recognize free internships. That doesn't happen in the world of engineering and applied sciences. Uh, we encourage you, and a lot of employers are encouraging you now, to have at least two internships. Um, the, the easiest way to do this is to, uh, to do this over the summertime, okay? So for instance, in May, all of my students that work for me are off doing internships for the rest of the summer and I'll see them again in the fall. And they've made enough money so that they can come back and pay off debts and pay for you know, rent and tuition and things like that. And so uh, it's, it's been really lucrative for them. To help them find these opportunities, we have a career services office right here at Floyd Hall and they are willing to work with every student starting on day one. We wanna get you career ready, okay? And so our career services folks here do employer information sessions where they bring companies to us throughout the year. Uh, and these companies will come in and take over a lecture hall, bring in pizza or subs, and just talk about what it is they do at their company, what they're looking for from a young professional, and how you can best prepare to hopefully come and work for them 
someday. So we do that throughout the year. We have Cafe Critique, which is for those of you who want to uh, spruce up your resume, you sit down one-on-one -on -one with them uh, on a walk-in basis, and they'll go through your, your resume uh, with you there. But they do all kinds of, uh, of projects with you too. They'll, they'll do classes and courses on um, not only resume work, but also interviewing skills, how to negotiate your salary, uh, things like that. We also have a huge engineering expo. This last year we had over 120 companies take over our building and uh, they take over all the hallways here and they want to meet you. They want to meet our students, not just the, the seniors who are graduating, but all of the students that we have here, including first year freshman students. And so we'll encourage you to uh, put on a collared shirt and a tie uh, or dress appropriately uh, and, and go out and start meeting with these employers. And uh, this can lead to internships and co-ops and of course, hopefully a career down the road. Overall, I want you to know that our focus is on the student. It focuses definitely on you. We have a lot of faculty engagement here. One of the benefits to having our own building is our faculty are here with you, right? They don't bounce to another building uh, to go to another office or something or somewhere else to teach class. They're here. And so it's not uncommon at all for our faculty to be sitting with our students in our cafeteria, uh, going over notes and ideas, uh, talking to students in the hallway, uh, hosting small study sessions. Uh, our faculty engagement is, is pretty incredible here. And so you see some examples of our faculty getting involved with students there. We also have a really fun innovation day. It's the first Friday every December and students come out and uh, make a pitch. And so they, they showcase some of the designs that they've been working on. They showcase some of their ideas. It's, we, we make it a competitive atmosphere. And if you win, uh, you advance to the Michigan Innovation uh, Competition where hopefully you can win some real money. And some of our students have before. And then um, every student will have a senior design presentation before they graduate. And so our Senior Design Day is, a, is an open expo. And so we will post when all the presentations are taking place. We invite the public, we invite all the families and parents to come and join us. Area teachers will bring in some of their students. Uh, and, um, and of course, we'll have dignitaries in the building as well. And it's great. So we have a team here of our aerospace students here who had a simulator that they built. And all the way in the back is Dr. Jennifer Bott, who is our provost. She came to join us this day. And so we do have a lot of fun with this. We do take pride in what our students produce. Now we know that you learn engineering by doing uh, engineering. And if you've ever seen me present before, you've probably heard me bring this up before, but if you play a musical instrument, the first time you picked up that instrument, you probably were not very good. That's okay, that's part of it. Part of learning is not being good, right? We learn through failure. You do the same thing in engineering. And here we try to control that a little bit, but you do that through our class projects, our design build competitions, our student organizations, our applied research. Our students do some really outstanding things while they're here. And it's not uncommon at all that after they graduate, they come back to see how things are still going. Uh, we have a great alumni engagement. Okay, let's talk about our student organizations. Class is gonna take up a lot of your time. Research is gonna take up a lot of your time. Your preparations to be successful academically are gonna take up a lot of your time. But that's not the only thing for you to do here. We encourage you to get involved in our student organizations. Now, our College for Engineering and Applied Sciences has over 30 ways to get involved in a student organizations. Uh, as students, um, the organizations are volunteer. Okay, these are extracurricular. And so I'm going to highlight a few of them. I don't have time to highlight all 30 plus, but let's talk about the American Society of Civil Engineers. Uh, we have a concrete canoe team that you see there on the left in the upper left hand corner um, and also in the water uh, down there. Uh, they build a canoe every year out of concrete and they take it to compete against other universities uh, throughout the Midwest. And so that's a lot of fun. We also have a steel bridge building competition and that's what you see there on the right hand side. We have the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics, AIAA. Now this group is a, a team of primarily aerospace students, but you don't have to be an aerospace student uh, to be on this organization. Uh, and they do things like uh, UAVs, they take a, a, 
a design build fly competition out west every year, uh, except for this year, unfortunately, uh, to compete against other schools from throughout North America. We have a rocketry team as well, and that's what you see there. That's a, myself and a bunch of the members uh, went to Oshkosh to the EAA um, fly in last year, which is a lot of fun every year when we get to go. Engineers Without Borders is uh, an incredible organization. It's made up of uh, a variety of different kinds of engineers, but also students from our environmental sciences programs over on main campus. And um, this last year, they got to go to Nicaragua to work with a local village there on a water filtration system. And uh, hopefully, uh, once we're through all of these weird pandemic times here, uh, hopefully they'll get to go back and, and do the next stage of this pro uh, project. More aerospace here. We have our Western Aerospace Launch Initiative, WALL-E. Uh, they build a CubeSat every year. Uh, well, they've been building it for years. And uh, we're working with NASA right now to try to get approval to hopefully someday soon have a Bronco satellite in orbit. And so that's been a lot of fun to watch the development there. One of our largest organizations is the Society for Automotive Engineers. Uh, you can see they've got a couple different uh, racing cars. They have a Formula One racer and a mini Baja racer, and they go off-road, and they compete all over the place. So um, they were just in Canada uh, at, in January, um, and so unfortunately, all the springtime competitions have been canceled this year, but I know that they are excited to get back and get building again. And then we have our Sunseeker solar car team. This is an entirely solar-powered race car uh, that our students build and race every summer uh, and it's either a cross-country race which is 1500 miles or more uh, in the summertime or they'll do a short track race where they have to modify the car a little bit uh, to accommodate for the different conditions there and so our students will build for years on this team and be a part of this so there's a lot of ways to get involved we have our society of women engineers our national society for black engineers our society of hispanic professional engineers uh, we've got so many organizations to be a part of. We really encourage you uh, to get involved. Now, one of the things that I always get asked is about our computer recommendations, and I would, I would encourage you to take note of that website and keep checking our primary website, too, for updates. Uh, this was updated last fall. It's probably going to hold true for next fall, but over the summer, uh, you may want to take a look at this. If you're thinking about buying a new laptop before you come to college, that's great, it's a great idea. I would always wait toward the fall when you can take advantage of those deals, plus you might get a better computer. Uh, it also allows you to talk to some of other college students uh, to get an idea of what it is you really need when you're here. All right, so that is the end of the formal part of the presentation. Let's see if I can pull up our chat here. All right. Any questions at all from the gallery? I see we have a lot of people, 31 people are here. That's great. All right, I'm gonna ask if you could indicate if you are a high school senior right now in the chat box there. Wow, okay. <laughs> Nearly all of you. Okay. All right, team. I'm really sorry about your senior year. I know nobody planned for this, um, but we care and we can't wait to have you here. And uh, we're going to get through this. Broncos are resilient and uh, we're going to press on. Uh, I've talked to many of you throughout this last year or two, if not you, certainly your parents. Uh, but please reach out if you have any questions. I'm here to answer anything you need. If you have any questions right now, go ahead and type it in. Isabel has a great question. Um, Isabel's question is, what is your opinion of someone who wants to double major with engineering? It really depends on what your double major will be. If you've got two engineering programs, you're gonna work with your academic advisor here on identifying those classes that will count uh, toward both majors and build your, your plan accordingly. If you're gonna major in something like engineering and say, 
uh, music performance or uh, business administration or something in another academic college, again, you'll work with your academic advisor, but you may have two advisors at that point who will work together uh, to make that happen. A lot of our students will do that, but uh, it's important to know you have a lot of minor options too. A lot of our students, well, all of our students, for the most part, will minor in mathematics automatically. But you can minor in physics, you can minor in a, in a foreign language, uh, you can minor in business as well pretty easily and keep yourself on track. So I hope that helps, Isabel. I'm happy to answer more questions. Um, Ryan asked, would there be time for a job along with an internship? Well, I guess what I would say is uh, it depends on where. Uh, a lot of our students who are here locally uh, find plenty of time to take a class and do an internship because they're right here. I don't know about a second job. An internship pays fairly well, so a lot of students don't need a second job. But we do have students who will go back home because they have an internship opportunity closer to home, and they may have some more flexibility there to get a second job. Um, but the internship is your job over the summer for the most part, okay? Harmony's asking a great question about um, being able to afford uh, a dorm room. Uh, and I don't know the answer uh, right offhand. I would encourage you to work with financial aid uh, and, and go to the website and set up a meeting with the financial aid counselor because I'm not too sure how the funding all works uh, for that. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not much of a help there. Okay. All right. Ah, Zach is asking a great question. Uh, do you have to modify your housing if you register for Eldridge Hall but are now considering the Honors College? I think what I would do is contact Residence Life directly at this point uh, and have that conversation with them. I don't think, I don't know that room assignments have taken place yet, so I think you've got plenty of time to do that. They're in the same building, so it should not be a problem at all. Okay. All right. We have a question here about. Western in general, are you required to stay on campus or can you go off campus? Great question. You are not required to live on campus. You are welcome to find an apartment or another living option off of campus. Uh, now, I would always recommend that you live on campus, but um, it, it, you have the option there. We don't force you to do that. Of note, you're also allowed to have a car in your first year on campus as well. And so parking is not fun. Uh, although I can tell you that parking and engineering is a blast because we have our own huge parking deck and better parking than anybody else. So, great question. Anything else? Hopefully I got most of your questions there. Ah, okay, Ryan's asking a question about cybersecurity. Has it progressed far enough to be desired by employers? Uh, yes. Yes, it has, uh, and, and I say that because we have just created a cybersecurity major uh, in, in conjunction with the Business College and the College of Arts and Sciences that is about to launch, and it will go live for next fall. And we only design and develop uh, new majors uh, when there's an industry demand for it. And so absolutely, uh, cybersecurity is progressing fa very fast right now, okay. Isabel is asking about uh, Alex. You have over a 640 in math. Uh, Alex, or I'm sorry, Isabel, you're asking about the Alex. Uh, Isabel, you would currently, if that score is, is gonna hold there, uh, you would currently place in the calculus one, you should be okay. But I would always encourage you to keep studying for the Alex, especially now, um, because one, you've got time, but two, we want you to, we wanna keep you engaged in mathematics throughout the summer because uh, when you get here, if you can be ready to go in the fall, you're going to benefit yourself a great, great deal. And it's free. Okay. Harmony, yes. Yes, you will. Absolutely. Uh, one of the words I, I want all of you to enter into your vocabulary is the word yet. If I'm not good at math, it's I'm not good at math yet. If I'm not good at public speaking, it is I'm not good at public speaking yet. Okay, you absolutely will be harmony and keep talking to us and working with us and we'll help you get there. Okay. James is asking if these slides will be available. And I'm going to let Jacob, who is working behind the scenes for me, answer that question. I believe they will be available on YouTube um, uh, for you to watch again. 
Jacob's asking about a co-op. If you did a co-op, would graduation be delayed by a semester? Potentially, yes, Jacob. Uh, we don't have a lot of co-ops, but the ones that we do uh, will tend to add another semester. Um, in exchange for that, you're getting paid very well by uh, your co-op employer, and oftentimes they will kick you to pay for your tuition for that next semester. All right. Uh, yes, Austin, great question. Do more AP credits than just calculus transfer into Western? Absolutely, yes. Um, I'm just thinking of the engineering side where we focus on things like AP calculus, AP physics, AP chemistry, but uh, virtually every AP program out there is transferable into Western as long as you take the exam and you get a three or higher on that exam. Okay, I would encourage you to get a four or higher for engineering. But yeah, great question, Austin. Absolutely. No. Thank you. The presentation will be available on YouTube tomorrow. Okay. Samuel's asking a great question. I'm taking Calc 1 and 2 in high school right now. Would I still have to take the Alex Math Placement exam, or could I just go into Calc 3? Uh, Samuel, you will be encouraged to take some kind of an assessment, whether that's uh, um, the SAT or the Alex. Uh, you'll, you'll have to take an assessment to show that those courses are resulting in your preparation uh, for the next level. Based on how you score there, you may uh, place in the higher uh, calculus level, levels. Brandon's asking if I can elaborate on the co-op program, certainly. Um, and then Sam, I'll get back to your uh, comment in just a second here. The co-op program um, here is a voluntary program. We don't have it built in with the exception of your paper engineering programs here. Uh, generally speaking, you will pay for three credits to go work professionally for a local company here who will um, pay you very well to do so. And then depending on the agreement that they have with the department, uh, they may be paying part for all of uh, your um, tuition that following semester. And so uh, that's something that you'll sit down with our career advisor and your academic advisor to work out because it may uh, prolong your stay here with us, depending on how they're built in. But we don't have a lot of them. Most of our programs are internship based. And it's primarily because we focus so much on research during the school year uh, that we don't want you to miss out on those opportunities. Okay. Sam, you mentioned it's a college credit class. Uh, that's great. Uh, we'll just need to see that transcript so we can evaluate those credits. Okay. Zach is asking, if I want to study abroad, what are the options as to where I could go? And it's funny you ask that because I just grabbed our study abroad sheet. Now, right now, nobody's going anywhere. Uh, but hopefully when things are up and running again, we've got students who study abroad in uh, Germany, in Brazil, in Spain, in Hong Kong, uh, in New Zealand, Australia. We, we go everywhere. Uh, and so we can work with you. We actually have a study abroad advisor who comes out to our building once a week and will sit with any student who's interested in studying abroad. Uh, and what's great is that all of the financial aid that you would get toward Western will transfer into any program um, that you're gonna do uh, abroad. All right, Jack is asking about the CEAS scholarships that were applied for at the end of January. And uh, Jack, they are starting to roll out right now uh, with some decisions. We, we got a massive delay, of course, with everything going on, so I apologize for that. The goal is usually to get them out by the end of February, but that's when things here were Kind of ramping up and getting crazy so i apologize um, but keep checking your financial aid account uh, through go to wmu and um, you can email me directly and i can follow up too okay all right as a freshman how much time would you expect to spend on the main versus engineering campus thank you for that question and i'm sorry i didn't address it more clearly uh, earlier in your first year most coursework is on main campus Okay, your calculus, your physics, your chemistry, your general education credits are all going to be on main campus. When you come over here for our, uh, for our campus over here at Floyd Hall, you're looking at the classes for Engineering 1001, the Entry to Design course. Uh, uh, you're looking at maybe your Technical Communication course uh, maybe over here, but in that first year, you've only got you know, maybe two or three classes over here at the Floyd Hall. Uh, most courses are on main campus. Now, as you progress, through your curriculum, you'll spend more and more time 
over here at this campus. But outstanding question. Sorry, I didn't address that sooner. Sam's asking about, uh, Samuel's asking about what kind of on-campus employment is there for students? <clears throat> um, Western employs over 4,000 undergraduate students, uh, and I don't even know the number of graduate students on top of that uh, across campus. So there, are, every single building on campus has student employees. And so whether you're working in a cafeteria or you're working as a student ambassador, I hire about 12 to 15 students every year to work for me as a student ambassador or a tour guide. Uh, there are a lot uh, of opportunities throughout campus. And so you'll want to um, uh, check out our career uh, website and we'll talk about the Handshake opportunities that you have there. Handshake is a program that you sign up for and they will help you identify options and opportunities here on our campus. Hopefully I've got to most of your questions. Okay. All right, team. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it because the, the questions have stopped. I really appreciate you tuning in tonight. Uh, let's keep this dialogue going. I want you to follow up with me. You can email me directly um, at the, uh, the uh, information provided there, and uh, I will be following up with you too. Look for phone calls from our current student ambassadors. We're making some calls right now. I may be reaching out to you as well, and we wanna make sure we answer any question you might have in these uncertain times. And if you wanna get your parents involved, or maybe they just wanna be involved, that's perfectly fine. We wanna to talk to them too, okay? We'll help them out as well, all right? Thank you all, I appreciate it. Have an awesome night, go Broncos.